first of all, Adrián and Olo Fuerza for inviting me to be part of this awesome Latino Arts Week. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know a little bit about uh, what inspired me to do this. Um, so I'm taking this WGS course. I'm a senior. I've never taken a WGS course in my life. So I decided to try something new. And in um, taking this course on the 1950s, it's a survey course on American culture in the 1950s, there's a whole section on people of color. And um, the first day I went to class thinking, oh, cool, you know, we're going to talk about the 50s. It's a very interesting decade. All kinds of things are going on for everyone. You know, minorities of all kinds are getting getting up in arms. And, you know, it's a pressure cooker for the 60s. So the first day of class, I go in and they say, like, what reminds you guys of the 50s? And everyone in class is talking about their cookie cutter answers of like, oh, Elvis and Greece and Rebellion. And of course, to me, I say the Bracero program. And everyone in the class is like, <laughs> like, I get these looks of like, what is that? And the professor's like, can you explain to the class what that is? <laughs> like, what are you talking about, the Bracero program? So, you know, I talk about the Bracero program. It's a guest worker program. Thousands of Mexicans came. It's very, very famous, yet no one in the class knew anything about it. And so I started looking at the syllabus, and I realized that Mexican-Americans and Latinos in general were just not going to be mentioned in the class. I, uh, I was a little offended, so I asked the professor during office hours. I go, um, you know, there's a whole session on people of color, and there's a whole four-week session just on Marilyn Monroe and Elvis Presley. Um, are you at any point going to include Latinos and Mexican-Americans? And she says, no, no, I'm not. And I say, and then she says, I did this on purpose. There isn't just, there's not a lot of mainstream coverage of like, you know, minorities in the 50s and, you know, they didn't have that big of a presence and I, that's completely false. It's not like we all came over here in the 80s. We've been around this country for decades. We've been here since before it was America. And so I think I just wanted to show that we've been in this country and been, we've been very essential in shaping the American landscape as we know it today. And I really wanted to show that. Um, so every sign shows a different aspect of this, and I just want to quickly walk you guys through it, you know. We face really deep se segregation in the American Southwest. Uh, this sign was actually found in Texas, talking about no Spanish or Mexicans, and the reason for that was that a lot of Mexicans, knowing that the segregation and racism that existed, actually identified as Spanish, even though they were Mexican. And another important thing that I thought needed to be mentioned was that the first segregation case in the country was not Brown v. Board, it was actually Menendez Westman, Westminster. And it was a case of Mexican-American children being segregated with their white counterparts. And uh, Earl Warren actually presided over this case, yet nobody talks about that. He would later preside over Brown v. Board, and it served as president for Brown v. Board. And of course, there were the suit suit riots that happened in the 40s that were just huge. In Los Angeles, all kinds of Mexican Americans were rejecting American culture. They were rejecting this uh, assimilation into white society. So they started to wear these over-the-top things. And they weren't the only minority group to do it. African Americans and Filipino Americans actually wore suit suits in response to the assimilation into white society. And um, they were actually targeted by the Navy. And what was very interesting to me was that women suit suiters were very outspoken in the struggle. So it wasn't just men. It was also women coming out in defense of our culture and our people. But nobody talks about this either. And the Bracero program, like I was saying, was just instrumental because we, we were able to come and we did so much. There were huge labor violations. Nobody talks about it. And a very interesting fact that very little know about, very little people know about, is that when Braceros were coming over from the, from Mexico in the 1940s and 50s, they were actually sprayed with DDT because they didn't want to contaminate the American landscape. Which to me, that is just ridiculous. We would, we don't even spray that anymore on plants, let alone people. And of course, I want to talk about Operation Wetback. In 1952, hundreds of thousands of Mexicans and Mexican-Americans were unlawfully deported to Mexico. Amongst these, they specifically targeted uh, union leaders. So a lot of Mexican-Americans, since they were like working class people, were in unions and they were union leaders. So a lot of these union leaders were eliminated by the government by deporting them unlawfully, even though they were born in the US and didn't speak Spanish necessarily, had no ties to Mexico, they were still deported. <clears throat> and then, um, so originally, I don't know if you guys know this, but the 14th Amendment was actually restricted to just blacks and whites. So Gus Garcia, seen here, took it to the Supreme Court and in landmark ruling, extended the 14th Amendment to all races and ethnicities. And that was just monumental, not just for Mexican Americans and Latinos, but for every minority group out there. And this was actually the first Supreme Court hearing uh, of a Mexican American case, which this is a really funny story. Uh, one of the Supreme Court justices asked, what's a Mexican American? I've never heard of that. To which Gus Garcia responded, and this is my favorite part, we were here in this country before the white back Sam Houston came over to Texas. 
And um, in response to my professor's whole thing about we weren't in the mainstream, well, actually, the only blacklisted movie in American history was Salt of the Earth, released in 1954, which talks about the plight of Mexican-American workers, specifically about women. And it talks about the plight of women within the Mexican-American community and how although Mexican-Americans will protest being, tr uh, being treated as second-class citizen, they go home and do that to their wives. So this was a very important film. The, the actor saying it, Maria de Puerta, was actually deported to Mexico, and the actor in it, um, Juan Chacón, actually became the president of the Communist Party in the 1960s. But once again, the professor chose to ignore this for our class. And of course, uh, I want to conclude this with, in 1959, these images were taken. Um, I'm sure you guys all know the LA Dodgers. Well, where Dodger Stadium currently sits used to be a Mexican-American neighborhood named Chavez Ravine. And it was largely Mexican-American. There was one African-American family. And because of the <coughs> domain, these people were removed from their homes that they owned, which was very, very difficult for people in the 50s of color to own their own homes. So these people were actually forcibly removed from the area. As you can see, this woman is being dragged out by policemen. This other woman was dragged out of her own home in 1959. And this was actually televised. So if you were living in Los Angeles, you saw this on TV. Yet, my professor claimed that we weren't in the mainstream which is a little ridiculous. If we're being televised, forced out of our homes, if we're coming out in blacklisted movies, if we're going to the Supreme Court, if we're being beaten up by a lady, but we're not in the mainstream, that's kind of ridiculous. So I think that I came out and I asked her to change the syllabus, and she said she's going to change the syllabus. And I think that we all have the responsibility to do that. <laughs> so much to this country and I think that you guys are responsible to make sure that this history is talked about. This history is not only just talked about within our own circles but also in an academic sense like Adrian was talking about and incorporated into your classes when we're talking about American history we're talking about everyone's history including our own so make sure when people talk about Brown Reward you talk about Menendez Westminster when people are talking about the, the World War II struggle you talk about the suit suitors when people are talking about the Dodgers you bring up the Chavez Ravine struggle. When people are talking about the 14th Amendment, you bring up Gar Ms. Garcia. We've been here, we've done a lot. Be proud of who you are. Thank you. So, I guess at this time, just go ahead and, and check it out. And then, of course, Staff will be around if you guys have any questions. There's some really great documentaries and movies um, on the on the Gus Garcia and uh, Hernandez Hernandez v. Texas. There's a class apart, um, which I believe Raza screened last year, um, and it was actually a documentary. The director was um, uh, Carlos Andovan, was actually one of the founding members of Harvard Red Club Raza. Um, so it's really cool to see that you know that we've had such a presence there as well. Um, and then um, uh, the Mendes uh, v. Westminster, um, I believe there's a documentary on that as well. It's not as popular. And then um, talking with Professor Jardine, uh, apparently there's now a book on that as well. So I mean, if you're interested, there are definitely things out there. And of course, Steph is a wonderful resource. So let's give her another round of applause.